Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be testing out a new version of VM370. Uh, as you know, uh, the one of the most complete versions of, uh, of VM370. There's several versions for download. Uh, and of course there's also a couple of videos already by, the, by this time in the Moshix mainframe channel. But uh, Robert O'Hara 6-pack is probably the most complete. Uh, there's a 5-pack, before there was a 4-pack, 3-pack. I've worked probably with all of them. The 6-pack is by far the most complete. And the one that we have in the Moshix um, uh, mainframe in the cloud is, uh, is VM 6-pack 1.2. It's stable. It's extremely stable. I have it running already a couple of months in the cloud with uh, about 20, 30 users and it's extremely stable. It only goes down when I want it to go down for backups. Now, um, there is, however, there is, there's been several modifications and extensions to the six pack because it's been out already, I think maybe a good five, six years already. And uh, some of the enhancements that have been applied to the six pack um, are the use of uh, 3270 full screen capabilities so that we can have a full screen editor and the full screen file browser. As you've seen in many of my previous uh, videos where we use the Moshix uh, mainframe with VM370. Now, um, there is, however, if you look for VM370 six pack version and put 1.3, you will see that um, there's now a six pack 1.3 better release, which, which was released uh, this last summer in June. And that promises several updates, which I think are important, uh, specifically in the area of the RSCS, the remote spooling um, system of VM370. And why that is important, we'll find out in, in a few, in a couple of videos later, but it is important. And uh, so the note name is gonna show at the bottom of the screen, which is also very important. And finally, it has the uh, Diagnosis 58 instruction built in, which is the diagnosis that enables a full screen uh, handling of 3270 from CMS. Then it has an updated C compiler, which is uh, always good to have, and several Fortran uh, enhancements. And there's some other enhancements. And so the beta before that was the beta I released, beta 2 released in March of uh, this year, in 2018. And then we have the beta I don't know when it was released. So you can see that people are still working on it. And uh, and so I have just downloaded this here and uh, this new release, which I haven't tried yet, and put it here on my Windows computer. And we're gonna unpack it, create maybe a new folder, six pack one three, and put all the contents here in there. Boom, that's done. So I guess we can move this away so it doesn't bother us so much. Okay, let's put it there. Now let's go look inside. It says here the readme file will tell us more. So there's a readme for the first release, which we don't know what it was. So let's go read that. You can see here files are actually assembled. In the, well, that's because we're copying it. Um, Let's open it with with a notepad. Okay. Well, there's quite a little bit of documentation here. So, no, that's not telling us much. That's not it. Let's open this one. So, this update to the VM6 pack includes the new several enhancements. Fix lowercase file names for Unix scripts. Okay, that's important. Install v LDF and di diagnosis. So that's the that's the uh, uh, full screen support. Okay, um, change. This is important. Change terminal definition so they auto negotiate for the size. Change 3270 so escape is escape as as needed to int file. Change six pack commands so the 32 sessions are started in separate window. Install the MacF tools, which is the full screen editor and uh, uh, the file list. Cleaned up the GCC disk, mini disk. Fix up help for for the full screen editor. Um, oh, they also provide a, a sample uh, 3270 
emulator for Windows. Uh, install the updated GCC compiler, the Watt4 compiler, CP new features. So let's see what else is new here. Full CPC port for 33. Dasty. Oh, this is kind of important because this would allow now this VM370 to run as a guest of VMESA with the 370 support, of which there are some versions around. So this now, because VM3, VMESA doesn't support anything older than 3380 disks. So now that we can run CP on 3380 disks, this makes it possible to run VM370 as a guest of certain versions of VMESA. I don't have those versions, but still, it should be possible. Maybe some people do. Uh, provides for a unique system or organization name adjacent to the running status via sysid similar to the later versions of VM uh, query US user ID command yeah which is kind of important I missed this feature because um, sometimes I want to know where I'm logged in and terminal mode mode 5 support shadow table bypass support for MVS 3.8 this is a performance enhancement for virtual real guests. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, so sh this should allow MVS 3.8 to run much faster. Alternate CP nuclear support. Okay, bug fixes. Fixing missing support for 38 storage controllers. Fix bug and. Okay, several bugs fixed. Now CMS can also run on 3380. This is great. Much larger disks. So I think um, they're probably going to release a new version of six pack, which is only 3380 based, which would make sense because you, you can have fewer disks and you can have much more uh, stuff on them. Uh, especially like in my mainframe, uh, VM370 mainframe in the cloud, I put all the user uh, mini disks on one volume and I'm already running out of space after like 30 users. And so now we'd have to add, you know, a new volume, which I can easily do. I mean, but but having a 3380 allows me to put all users I will ever have on one on one volume. So this is important. Um, so this is quite extensive. Now I don't know what else he fixed in, because he says he fixed some stuff in RSCS, which I'm most interested in. Let's open that. Now with DOS. Prex interpreter is integrated. CMS does matter alive and well. We we have made a video about that about Visa. Um, I don't see here anything. Uh, yeah, I don't. Well, why don't we just run it and see what else we can find out? So it looks like extensive uh, improvement of the six pack, which is, was already excellent to start with. So I'm just trying to find out if something I want to run for the for my VM370 mainframe in the cloud. So desktop six pack one two three. Um, let's see here. Okay, maybe we'll have to uh, adapt the settings here. Six pack conf. Okay. Disable. Okay. Well, let's just try to run it. Hercules minus F six pack. Oops. What went wrong here? Okay, so it's already running. So let's choose here a local host. And this is already running. So let's give this a try. It's a little bigger for the viewers here. So let's uh, 
main cpcms. Okay, so fs list works. So now we already have um, full screen file browsing. We see here Fortran, the Fortran listing. Let's go look at like this. Yeah. So we know that the uh, diagnose 58 instruction works because we have file browsing, full screen file browsing. Um, this relates to vSAM. Uh, I don't see anything here that stands out. I don't know if you do. Okay. So then uh, let's see more shapes YouTube. Okay. So this is version of uh, the full screen browser 125, which is the last version uh, released by Hans in 2013. The, uh, the author of the full screen um, editor, amazing editor by the way, um, very feature complete. So this works. Uh, you also have color support in the new version 125, so much better version. And then we have uh, xlist, which allows you to select certain files and then apply uh, CMS commands to them in batch, kind of, which is a very nice feature. Access xlist, so it's here, this is the command. Um, let's see if this list, list direct. Okay, so this is probably the one, judging from the date. Uh, let's invoke it in the browser. Uh, prefix left. Okay. So one of the things about the full screen editor here, EE, is that it doesn't, uh, if the line is longer than 80 bytes, you can't just scroll to the right and left. It will actually wrap the line around to the next line. Just the way this works. Um, we can also log in with a bigger monitor. Uh, I think this should work. So why don't we log out from here? Log off. And then connect. Yeah, so now we can do main six uh, is CP CMS. Okay. And now we can do FS list direct and let's go look at this uh, yeah now it all fits in within the same mark within the same screen uh, i want to make this a little bit bigger okay this should be better now um, here's the user rcs which is the one i'm particularly interested in but i can't see what has been changed there even though it mentions it in the notes. But, um, well, I don't know what else. Um, we still have dial CP watch, of course. You can see it resizes the monitor because it's a different 3270 uh, full screen handling than the one by, by uh, CMS. So that's why the screen is resized. And everything looks fine here. The moment we get out of it, we get the full screen back again. So the full size. Log on uh, main CPCMS. Okay, so this seems to be to work. I don't know how stable it is, but uh, but it works. So. Uh, FS list DMK. Uh, okay, so this is the last uh, kernel nucleus was generated on March 2018, and uh, this is the devices. So if you need to know which devices you can connect disks, etc., because in VM37 you still have to tell it on which devices to expect, on which addresses to expect what devices. 
in later versions such as VMESA and up, it auto senses devices, which is something that I wish um, ZOS would also do, but it's still not quite there yet. Um, so yeah, so this is this uh, is a new assembly of the uh, new nucleus uh, IO definition assembly, and here's the, the text which is used by the CP control program when it when it IPLs. Other than that, I think that. Uh, uh, this looks good. I, I, I see really just right now no reason to switch my VM370 for the Moshix mainframe in the cloud to 6-pack 1.3. Um, looks like maybe they're going to add some more stuff in 1.4 and then maybe release it or maybe reset everything for 3380 DASTY devices. So for now, I'm going to keep my mainframe in the cloud running with uh, VM 6-pack the one that was released six or seven years ago, it's very, very stable. Um, I'm interested mainly in the RSCS improvements, but I will have to ping the author here uh, to tell us what it is that uh, was done there. Uh, this line is really uh, interesting to me. And you can see here a six pack. This is the node ID that this refers to. In the version that I run in the Moshix, in the VM370 Moshix mainframe, we don't have the node ID and it's quite significant uh, in change so I can show you uh, this is my VM370 mainframe in the cloud if I log in and then you'll see that there is no such uh, node ID okay so here you have if I put it in running you'll see here the exact same thing but no node ID. And if you start to network VM 370s together, which you can because of RSCS, because that's why it's such an important thing. If you have proper RSCS support, you can start to network VM 370s together, not over Ethernet, uh, even, even though, of course, Ethernet is plays a part in it, but over uh, dial-up lines and modems, which are then, of course, carried by uh, TCP IP connections. But from the point of view of VM 370, it's going to be or from the mainframe, it's going to be uh, it's going to be dial-up modems and dial-up or lease lines, and once you connect those systems, you can you can create a worldwide network. Uh, just letting you think about this for a while about the possibilities if we did that. So um, so that's why knowing on which node you are is very very important. So um, but I mean I have on the if I use let's say this is on the on the VM370 my Moshix mainframe, if I use Moshix YouTube A, you will see that I have the version of of the uh, full screen editor that's the newest one as well, right? So, so if I put it here, put this one here as well. So I do Moshix YouTube you'll see that I have the exact same version because you can update the full screen editor without changing the underlying six pack uh, version. And uh, so we are already here on the mainframe on the latest version of those tools. And this is really what most CMS users care about, uh, care about, sorry. Uh, this is what they care about. And, um, and they don't really care about all these other underlying features, but I do. And so I'll keep a very clean, very, keen eye on this uh, VM6 pack beta features that are coming out and whenever I see that there's a need to update the Moshix uh, VM370 mainframe to the latest version of 6 pack I will of course do so. Um, I can also just retroactively apply some of these changes also to my um, to my mainframe because we have the source for all that so it should be easy to apply some of those changes here as well. Uh, but I just wanted to give it a, a run. I think if you start from scratch and if you're just downloading VM370 for the first time, I think it makes sense that you uh, download this version here that we've been looking at, six pack, because you have the full screen tools already installed and it looks to run fine. If you do a lot of Fortran work, then also it may make sense to take the latest version. Uh, for me, it only makes sense because um, this line here, but since I don't know what it means, I don't see any reason right now to update. But I, of course, uh, I welcome all the work that uh, David Wade here is putting into it. And and I hope that uh, this gets to a 
a, a new six pack release that um, uh, especially maybe the 3380 disk support so that everything is going to be a 3380 because then people can run it as a guest of VM ESA. So that's it for today. Uh, if you have any questions about six pack, about all these versions, what this old stuff means, then of course post uh, comments below this video. Always welcome and always, uh, I'm always eager to answer or other people can answer of course. If you like this particular video, please do press the thumbs up button and uh, see you soon back again in the world to the Moshik's mainframe channel. Thank you. Goodbye.